Hey everyone, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated. I know, I know, it's been ages since I've made a video, but I promise you I've been stockpiling mountains of computers for my new weekly retro series, and that's going to start well, sometime soon. And that should definitely be a regular thing because I need to do the videos so I can get rid of all this crap. So anyway, in the meantime, I wanted to do a quick video about something that has been an incredible tool for my business for the last 14 years, but that basically no one in the business ever seems to know about. And that thing is prepaid return labels through FedEx and UPS and other shippers. I know that doesn't sound exciting, but stay with me a few minutes and you'll see how big a deal it is. The basic idea is you want someone to send something to you, but you don't want them to have to deal with the nuts and bolts of shipping. So you give them a prepaid label, they print it and tape it to the box, give it to FedEx or whatever, and you're done. It's a very simple concept, but over the years I've realized there's a lot of different use cases for it, and you get advantages from being able to produce these labels. And the best part is you can use them as leverage in your transactions. First off, being able to give someone a label shows legitimacy and professionalism. People get a prepaid label with your company information, their address on it, and they think, wow, I'm dealing with a real company here. This isn't some fly-by-night operation. So they inherently trust you, and it puts you ahead of the others in terms of trust. It also shows commitment, because here you are willing to pay for it, willing to front the cost of shipping. One good example of this is my website. My website has a function where people who want to sell old MacBooks submit quote requests. They put in the info, I get a notification, I give them an offer, and if they like the offer, I send them a prepaid label and they send in the computer. The prepaid label itself often seals the deal. I can't overstate the sense of relief that people experience from getting a prepaid label. If you think about it, when the average person thinks about shipping, and this is a person who doesn't do much shipping or any shipping, they envision having to find a box, they realize they have no packing material, they fear packing it badly, which they will, they realize they don't have any tape, they think about walking into FedEx or the post office and not knowing what they're doing and standing on long lines, only to be told that they didn't bring what they need, which will happen, and that it's going to cost three times what they expected. So really, they envision a horror show. So yeah, this is what you're up against when you ask someone to ship something to you. But with a prepaid label, you take all that away. Uh, just print the label, tape it to the box, drop it off on the FedEx counter, and walk away without even talking to anyone. I can't stress enough how much of a huge strategic advantage it gives you to be able to offer this to people. It's often the difference between the deal happening or not. Honestly, I get a lot of stuff for free just because I'm willing to send a label. At the end of the day, a lot of people just want to dump a computer. They just want to get rid of it. Or they want to have the satisfaction of knowing it'll be properly reused or recycled. And so shipping is the only obstacle in their mind. Plus, when a label is used, I can track it in my FedEx management tool, and I know when it's arriving, and I'm not just sitting around wondering if they ever managed to ship it out the way they said they would. It works really well with recyclers, too. Often they'll have 100 MacBooks and they generally ship freight, which is a whole universe of shipping that's completely different. So they have the same fear as end users when it comes to FedEx or UPS and it sounds totally inconvenient to them. I'll offer to send five prepaid labels and they hand off the boxes to the FedEx guy on the daily pickup and, and they're done. I get so much stuff that I wouldn't have gotten at all just because I can provide this convenience. One very important thing to add, a popular misconception is that you have to figure out dimensions and weigh boxes, but you don't have to know the weight or dimensions of the boxes. People don't realize this, but the weight and dimensions you put on the label really don't matter at all. FedEx and UPS charge you based on their own weighing of the box and their own measurements, not what you state. The only reason to weigh a package is to figure out what the price of the shipment is going to be. For example, if you need to charge your customer shipping. But if you don't care what it costs, or if it doesn't matter, let's face it, does it really matter if you're paying $16.12 or $19.55? You're going to do the deal anyway. You can put any old number on the label you want, and FedEx will bill you the correct amount. I personally consider it a waste of time to ever figure out shipping costs. It's all very predictable anyway. I know the standard size boxes and I use and what they usually weigh, and I'd rather just guess and not waste my time. 
The one caveat I'd add here though is when creating the labels, keep the numbers low. If you think it might weigh 20 pounds, put 5 pounds. And keep the dimensions way smaller than it actually is, because it does matter if your number is over. If it weighs 20 and you put 50, they will charge you for a 50 pound shipment. So always put the weight and dimensions uh, way under. And it also does matter, especially with FedEx, if the package is over 50 pounds. They will charge you a ridiculously huge overweight surcharge. So yeah, do generally try to stay under 50 pounds. That's kind of the, the red line you don't want to cross. But if you ship all the time, you should know generally what your packages weigh. I ship a van load of packages almost every day, and I haven't weighed one in years. So anyway, probably the coolest application of the prepaid label is that it allows you to win local pickup only listings that you couldn't win otherwise. You can't win those because chances are you're not local, right? How many times have you seen an eBay listing and thought, gee, if I was only in range of Tulsa, Oklahoma or whatever. So local pickup listings mean the seller doesn't want to ship at all and you have to drive to the place to pick it up. But the cool thing is with prepaid labels, you can talk them into shipping because you're alleviating both most of the reasons that they don't want to ship. So think about that. A normal eBay listing that the seller is willing to ship. The audience is the whole country or the whole world. Your competition bidding or buying is potentially hundreds of people across the country. So that's really not ideal. But if it's a local pickup only, the seller is reducing the pool of available buyers to almost zero, really, unless they live in a major city. Most people will look at that listing and think, nope, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to go to that person's house in Tulsa, Oklahoma and pick up uh, the package. So your competition goes from hundreds or thousands to who knows, even maybe one or two. The audience is exponentially smaller. Now, for example, here's an amazing listing that I just bought. And actually, it's what finally inspired me to do this video because it's such a beautiful example of all the things I'm talking about here. So this pile of retro computers is in Michigan. And first off, it's just a freaking amazing, amazing deal. Multiple computers, original boxes, all in great shape. Uh, the 1581 three and a half inch floppy here is worth at least $200 by itself. The Commodore 128 with matching monitor and uh, floppy drive can be sold as a set, probably for 800 to 1000. I've sold several like that, so I know. The voice cartridge with original materials is worth 150. Windows 3 on floppy disk for DOS. New in box sealed is worth 100. It just goes on and on. Conservatively, probably there's $2,000 worth of stuff here, if not more. And that doesn't even include the stuff that's not described. Um, clearly, the seller just wanted to be done with it all. They don't even want to do a breakdown of what's included. And I'm not going to bother them because that'll just uh, make things worse for me. But look at this, local pickup only, no shipping. So, oh well, right? I'm not going to drive to Michigan, so this isn't going to happen, right? No, actually. I messaged the seller, politely ask, hey, can I send you as many prepaid labels as you need to ship this to me? Just tape them to the box and dump it at FedEx and walk away. So I asked the seller, would this be an option you'd consider? I say, I know they don't really want to ship, and if they don't want to, this is totally understandable, but I thought it couldn't hurt to ask. I'm as nice as possible because you're asking them to do something they probably don't want to do. So anyway, I think you get the idea. There's so many uses of these labels. You can use them on eBay, Craigslist, Facebook, whatever. I've PayPal'd people I found on Craigslist on the other side of the country, sent them a label and got items I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. I know, I know, you shouldn't trust people on Craigslist. You can't trust people with your money in advance on Craigslist, right? But not really, because as long as you use the invoice feature and show details, and you don't use friends and family, you have PayPal buyer protection. So if the thing never shows up, you're protected. It's really just about as safe as anything. Another great thing about this is you aren't charged until the item is shipped and FedEx or UPS actually scans the label. So you can literally send hundreds of these labels around and you don't pay a thing until they're actually used. So it's not like you're spending money on something and taking the risk of it not happening. You can even send them randomly with shipments if you want and say, hey, if there's any electronics you want to get rid of, I put a prepaid label in the box, so feel free. So the next question is, how do you produce these labels? It's easy, but first we've got to have the discussion about getting a FedEx and UPS account in general. You need to have both accounts. If you're a business and you don't have FedEx and UPS accounts, you're really screwing up because without an account, both of these companies charge you retail shipping prices, which is literally like 
twice the amount they charge when you have an account. So help yourself out. Go get accounts with FedEx and UPS right now if you haven't. You'll want to connect your bank account or credit card to the accounts and then you'll get billed weekly. It's really easy. Having a payment method attached is what lets them bill you once the labels have been scanned. But what you say, you don't trust them and you don't want to connect them to your credit card or bank account? Well, sorry, that's, that's just tough and you're going to lose out if you don't get over yourself and do that. If you want to be a real business, you have to act like a real business and put up with these kinds of things. If you don't, you're not going to reap the benefits and you're going to get screwed financially. And that's just dumb. Anyway, just log into the FedEx account that you now have, click on shipping, and then choose create a shipment. And now the standard shipping screen shows up. You can see it says, you know, from me, and then you have to fill out the two fields. This is the standard form to ship something to someone else. To make a return shipment, it's a little bit hidden, but you click the arrow by the ship thing up here, and you can see how they kind of hide it from you. Um, but then you can choose create return shipment. Now this form is exactly the same, except you can see the return package to field, which is automatically set to you, and then you have to fill out the return package from section. Beyond that, it's just like a regular label. You need to get the return address, or you can fill in a bogus address if you need to, because chances are it's not going back to them, right? Fill out the type, which is usually print, because you're going to print or save it, but you can email it to them if you want. You can select how many labels you want, select weight, and remember to keep the weight super low. Then generally I'll choose FedEx ground because it's cheap, and then keep the dimensions minimal. I don't usually do signature required because my place is safe, but you can if you want. And then you can click rate and transit times to get an estimate of the shipping if you want. And then you click ship, and then you're done, and you can print it out. One little trick, if you want a PDF, click here and click save to PDF, which is useful. Also keep in mind, if you're emailing labels through eBay, uh, you'll want to convert to JPEG or possibly PNG and keep it as high res as possible. Otherwise, they will get a pixelated version uh, that doesn't scan right and FedEx might choke on it. And that's it, really. You just give them the label and wait. One thing I've got to say is the FedEx and UPS websites are total crap. They're like web 1.0 sites that have been patched and layered on with garbage for decades and they're buggy and they're frustrating and they change them all the time for no reason at all. So everything I've said might change tomorrow, but the point here is you know the concept, not the exact tiny little place to click. If you know the concept and you're not completely dumb, you can figure out where they've moved stuff to and all that. And you can also figure out the UPS site, which has the same basic procedure. So yeah, if you want to track what's going on, pull down tracking and then choose manage your delivery. And you might have to sign up for this feature initially if I remember right, but it's free. And then you have to click manage your delivery again because the website is crap. And then besides the fact that this is written super badly and it's clunky, what you have here is actually really cool. You can see all the pending activity on your address, stuff going out, stuff coming in. It's a very nice high level dashboard. And if your labels have been scanned, you can see them here. One thing that's nice is you can also modify the delivery. So let's say you're not going to be home and you want FedEx to hold the package or you want to sign for a package the signature required, stuff like that. There are limits. Sometimes you can't do what you want, but at least you have this dashboard and a system that sometimes lets you do these things. And UPS has a similar dashboard as well. Anyway, another thing you want to do is call FedEx and UPS yearly and ask for lower rates. Tell them you're contemplating shipping a thousand packages a month with them and you're not sure if you want to because the rate on your account is too high and they will generally lower it for you. Now you might think this sounds deceptive, but whatever, they're raising your rates every year. You can be guaranteed of that and you can be guaranteed they're hitting you right now with all kinds of ridiculous COVID related surcharges and other bogus nonsense every chance they get. So yeah, it's necessary to play the stupid game and call them every year and get your rates knocked down. You don't have to do it, but if you don't, you're just throwing away money. The last final, final thing I'll say is about liability with using these labels. When you give someone a label, it's actually you shipping, not them. You're taking on the responsibility. Normally with eBay or whatever, it's their responsibility to get the thing to you. And if it doesn't show up, you get a refund. But if it's your label and the truck drives off the road or it gets damaged or stolen off your porch or whatever, it's on you. Just keep that in mind. And if it gets destroyed because it's packed badly, it's hard 
harder to go back to them and complain because you convince them to ship it, right? I'm not saying this is a reason to not use the labels, but just that you want to be smart about it and keep this in mind. There are times when you're dealing with a shady seller and you want them 100% on the hook with their shipping and you want them to buy it so they're responsible completely. Anyway, so that's it. These labels have benefited me countless times, so many times I can't even express how many. And I really hope they help you out in your business dealings and I hope the video has given you some ideas. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time, which will be soon. I promise, really, really, it'll be soon. Oh, and one final, final, final thing. If you haven't seen it, Louis Rossman had me on his channel recently to talk about the NDA that eBay is forcing refurbishers to sign if they want to sell refurbished. Otherwise, they make you sell as used, even though it's still a refurbished product. Uh, it was a great discussion, and I'll put a link to it in the video notes, and I'll talk to you later.